to be joined by Roger Stone here in studio. Uh, you know, I was I was kind of relenting from David Brock and Media Matters saying that I said Hitler was still alive, something I never said. But then actually it was brought to my attention, Roger, I didn't even know you and Hitler had lunch last uh, week. Only weeks ago. So yeah, yeah so it's, it's confirmed now. I mean, I didn't know that you guys were having dinner. Stand by, you're about to get the Media Matters tweet. Roger Stone seen dining with Adolf Hitler. Look, uh, <laughs> I was there. What he said was the recently declassified documents uh, pertaining to the JFK assassination showed some traffic uh, among the government communicators that would indicate that they believe that he may have escaped to South America and died later. So, to be absolutely clear, Owen Scheuer never said Hitler was still alive. The question is, is David Brock still alive? Hasn't been seen since his heart attack. Uh, but um, we had Andrew Kerr from Citizens Audit on a couple weeks ago. Clearly, Media Matters for America still engaged in tax evasion and other violations of the federal election law. Potential money laundering. But extremely profitable for Mr. Brock, extremely profitable. Well, I wonder why he's having a heart attack. Uh, perhaps maybe like Donna Brazil, he's seeing the change of tides and wants to try to save his own skin and maybe try to pull out from everything that he's been doing with the Hillary Clinton campaign and um, funneling that money back and forth between his super PACs. So uh, and other nonprofits, I see that um, Donna Brazil has a new book coming out mm. entitled Hacks. I assume it's a profile on her various friends in the Democratic Party. Oh, I uh, thought it was an autobiography. I'm not. It's not clear, but I will. Uh, I am going to buy a copy, however. OK, so you'll give us the lowdown on that. Uh, Roger, you know, there's all kinds of news right now. You know, um, I'm not sure where you want to start. I think that it's incredible, though how everybody's trying to manipulate everything Trump says. Meanwhile, they're completely ignoring the bombshells that are coming out of what Hillary Clinton and her campaign was actually doing the entire election. Yeah, it's pretty extraordinary. Terrific story on InfoWars today uh, by Dr. Jerry Corsi about Twitter um, uh, essentially censoring and weeding out uh, anti-Hillary tweets. That's right. Further grist for and the anti-Podesta as well. You know, further grist for the extraordinary lawsuit that we have coming shortly uh, uh, against Twitter for uh, censorship, uh, antitrust, and various other issues. I I've been very heartened, Owen, by the large number of multinational corporations, big names who've come forward willing to underwrite my lawsuit. So it's not just, you know, it's not Roger Stone alone, but it, it will be, um, you know, we will have uh, plenty of financing to uh, bring these culprits to justice. Is that kind of spurring you along right now, the support that you're getting? Well, the kind of uh, First Amendment or telecommunications lawyers that it takes for this kind of case are exceedingly expensive, in all honesty pretty much beyond my personal financial capability. But uh, uh, with the assistance of some major corporations who are interested in fighting censorship, um, I think we'll be able to uh, put up a formidable battle. Uh, and I've been looking at the uh, home of the CEO of Twitter, and I'll be ready to move in when I own the company. Are you thinking, ready to move in? You're ready to own Twitter, take uh, it over? I definitely am. And, of course, I, would, uh, I wouldn't censor anybody. No. I would let the craziest left-wing whack job in the world have their Twitter feed. Well, they already do. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So you wouldn't have to change that. <laughs> you would just have to let, uh, you know, conservatives have free speech on Twitter. That would be the big difference. But they censored you on Twitter. And I'm curious, though. Is this the kind of thing that could go beyond Twitter? Because we know that the main competitor of Twitter is Gab and Apple Store and the Android App Store. Neither one of them will even put Gab on their platform anymore. So they've completely erased Gab from the competition. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a terrific piece that I have up at InfoWars right now. It talks about how Twitter erases you as a human being, which is what they seek to do. My wife returned from abroad last night only to find out that her Twitter feed has been suspended. Curious in view of the fact that she hasn't tweeted in six months and has never tweeted anything other than perhaps pictures of our grandchildren and other, you know, personal things to her friends, but never anything political. So I guess this is preemptive censorship yeah 
We're, we're, we're censoring her because of something she might say in the future. Twitter, I'm going to enjoy owning you. I really am. I'm going to enjoy this as well. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that, you know what, it would be great, and I'm sure this won't happen, but it would be great if Twitter just came out and admitted what they were doing, admitted their political bias, admitted how they're trying to censor people that have different political views. Now, obviously, we know they won't do that. Um, so they're going to give you the opportunity to go ahead and just own Twitter with this lawsuit, aren't they? Well, and I think, as you correctly point out, um, the folks at Google are paying close attention. The people at YouTube are paying close attention because they're guilty of the exact same thing. Mm. So I do think the fight will be broadened. At the end of the day, Google is the big enchilada. They're the ones uh, who I think have the most to lose, but uh, their reprehensible behavior has brought this kind of legal action. And I, frankly, I think the Trump Justice Department was already looking at antitrust uh, uh, enforcement against them. This is only going to hasten this. The president's new appointee to the FTC, a uh, very good man, man who clearly understands these issues extensively. Now. On that same page, there is a story right now talking about the DOJ potentially um, thwarting the buyout of Time Warner by AT&T. Uh, honestly, this is something that I don't necessarily disagree with. I, I never felt that. But you have a different angle as to why that this merger would actually be good. Well, look, I, I think AT&T is far more responsible if AT&T owned Time Warner and Time Warner owned CNN. I think you get a house cleaning. I've predicted that here on InfoWars. Uh, I uh, predicted it on my Twitter feed before it was in so unceremoniously suspended. Um, you know, Don Lemon, Jake Tapper, Anna Navarro. Bye bye. So wait, you're bye. telling me you don't think you don't think uh, fake Fopper? I mean, um, um, Jake Sucker? Or I'm sorry, uh, Jake Tapper. You don't think that he would have his platform to say Allahu Akbar anymore? No, I think fake Tapper would have a hard time to say that. Um, you know, the the uh, the people who uh, who uh, bombed in uh, in Times Square. You know, they're merely misunderstood. Mm. Strange, very strange. It is very strange. The uh, the comments that come out of CNN. So does that mean, are you saying that um, Zucker would be out and it would be a, a clearinghouse from the top down? I, that's what I believe. I, I think new management would clean house and uh, maybe CNN would go back to being a news organization. Like that would be nice. Be. You know, today they're a propaganda front for the Clintons. This is why yep. we euphemistically call them the Clinton News Network. Uh, you know, in the meantime... Those uh, who do want to continue to follow uh, my exploits, they can go to stonecoldtruth.com or on Twitter, they can go at Stone Cold Truth. I don't, I don't run that feed, but they do a pretty good job of covering what I'm up to, whether it is uh, uh, the incredible things we've learned in the JFK documents that have been uh, uh, declassified or whether it is... Uh, Media Matters ignores those. Uh, of course, or whether it, or whether it is um, uh, the... The, uh, the the lawsuit against Twitter itself. It's the best place to go. So you can still follow my exploits. Now, sooner or later, they'll probably block them too, even though that's not my Twitter feed. Somebody set up uh, Roger Stone GOP, also not me. They got suspended today. They got too. shut down, right, huh? Right. So, well, well, you will not be silenced, and you will always be on the war room with us as well as the Alex Jones show breaking it all down. So we'll be sure to follow that. But it, what Roger just said about CNN is is so true, folks. Look, I am a news junkie. You honestly wouldn't even believe it. I can't even explain it. I, I, I literally monitor like 10 different news every day. I don't even watch CNN and MSNBC anymore because there's zero news value. They don't even cover news. It's Trump bashing and Allahu Akbar all day. Well, we've always got the specials at InfoWarsStore.com. 50% off specials include Brain Force Plus, Winter Sun, Silver Bullet. All of these great supplements are 50% off right now at InfoWarsStore.com. Be sure to take advantage of those specials. Don't forget 25% off DNA Force while in stock. 25% off Biome Defense while in stock. 40% off Survival Shield X2. That's going to be ending soon. 40% off Secret 12 Vitamin B Supplement. That's going to be ending soon. Anthroplex also 50% off ending soon. And Super Male Vitality 30% off 
ending soon as well. And this was a phrase coined by Roger Stone. I'm I'm kind of twisting it a little bit, but if you'd like to kick George Soros in the groin, go to InfoWarsStore.com and support us. If you would like to kick George Soros in the groin, InfoWarsStore.com. Well, Roger. You clean that up a little bit, Owen. I cleaned it up just a little bit. So we've got Hillary Clinton. You know, why won't Hillary go away? Because Bill and Hillary Clinton are the penicillin-resistant syphilis of the American body politic. Hmm. Uh, I don't may know, also have syphilis. I don't know a single professional Democrat. I have many friends who are Democrats who just don't want the Clintons to go away. Uh, terrific uh, piece I noticed on MSNBC today, which points out that, uh, as I have said several times here on Infowars, Michelle Obama is the front runner for the. Democratic Party's nomination in You're 2020. Kidding. Michelle Obama would, would would be without any question the strongest nominee for the Democratic Party. Michelle Obama's candidacy would end once and for all the influence of the Clintons in the Democratic Party. Do not think that there is any love loss between the Clintons and the Obamas. There is none. Uh, and I'm predicting again here today Michelle Obama will be a candidate for president in 2020, and she is the likely Democratic nominee. Wow, big prediction here from Roger Stone. Mark that down in the books. So do you believe, uh, Joan Rivers, that Michelle Obama is a transsexual? I, I have no views on that. I do know okay. that the, the, <laughs> the machinery of the Democratic Party is still firmly in the control of Barack Obama. And if she should choose to be a candidate, she would be a very formidable one. How do you explain that bulge in her dress? That's a different question. That's a different story. We don't need to go down that. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. That's kind of interesting because I think the Obamas could potentially be hurting themselves. You haven't heard too much from Barack, but Michelle continues to go out there. She's hosting uh, demons at her library to read to children. I think that the more exposure the Obamas get, the less likely they are to win in another election. Because like you said, it's just like the same thing with Hillary Clinton. People are just sick of them. Well, I don't think there's as much of a fatigue uh, about the Obamas politically as there is of the Clintons. Uh, both Barack uh, and Michelle Obama continue to poll much, much better than the Clintons. Uh, you notice that she is doing more and more substantive issue oriented stuff out on the road. Um, do not underestimate the, the Obama's stranglehold on the machinery of the Democratic Party do not underestimate their ability to win caucuses and primaries if they choose to do so. I'm going to stand by my prediction. Michelle Obama will be the Democratic Party candidate for president in 2020, and she should not be underestimated. She will be a formidable candidate. All right, you heard it here first from Roger Stone. Again, this is InfoWars, so get tomorrow's news today. Get next week's news today, next month's news today, next year's news today, next century's news today at Infowars.com. You know, we told you about the JFK cover-up, declassified documents, prove we were right again. Now you've got Hillary, though. Back to Hillary for a second, the demon spawn. Hillary slams Trump for denouncing Islamic terrorism. Presidents shouldn't point fingers or divide after tragedies. This was Hillary Clinton on a uh, comedy show uh, last night. I'm not even going to give it the time of day to plug it. But Roger, you know, this is the same woman that George Bush said was like his sister. George Bush started a war based on Islamic terrorism. But Hillary's silent on that. Yeah, it, it's extraordinary what's happened to the once great Democratic Party of Harry Truman and John F. Kennedy. There was a time when both American parties, for example, the Republicans and the Democrats were both anti-communist, both patriotic, both pro-American. They had somewhat different domestic political views, but when it came to foreign policy, they were all American. Now you have a Democratic Party that will not stand up to Islamic terrorism, will not stand up to Islamic terrorism uh, uh, victimizing of people who are gay or lesbian, uh, will not stand up for human rights. Uh, it, it's a shell of what the party used to be, which is why I think so many working class Democrats uh, in places like Ohio and Florida, Michigan, Wisconsin voted for Donald Trump 
and would do so again if the election were held again tomorrow. Despite the media uh, uh, onslaught, the, the unrelenting attacks on our president, his popularity uh, and his base has held up all of the sophisticated polling that I had the uh, ability to see when I was in Washington on Monday shows that if the election were run again tomorrow, he would win again. He might even win by a slightly larger margin. The erosion, it was in Hillary's support. Oh, and that's uh, amazing considering the, the, the hatchet job that's been done on the president by the mainstream media. Which is why I'm just so perturbed that Hillary would continue to do all these media appearances, continue to open her big fat lying trap. Have you ever seen, in all of your years being in politics, covering politics, have you ever seen a failed presidential candidate that just refuses to accept her defeat or, or his defeat? I think this is because the Clintons have never had the ability to see themselves. They cannot see how phony they come across. They cannot see how disingenuous they sound. They cannot see how um, how uh, their their public persona uh, comes across as so inauthentic. I, I thought during the election that this is one of Donald Trump's greatest attributes. Everything he said didn't always come out exactly right. Uh, he, he isn't polished. He, he, he isn't uh, he doesn't sound like he's reading somebody else's words. On the contrary, he seems genuine. He seems real. He seems authentic, warts and all. What you see is what you get. He's a real guy and, and uh, real guys make mistakes and real guys also uh, uh, speak the truth and real guys can inspire. Everything Hillary Clinton ever said was tested, focus grouped. You could see that she was mouthing words written by others, and she just comes across as completely phony. There's nothing genuine about her. She doesn't care about anyone but herself. She doesn't care about anything other than lining her pockets. She doesn't have any guiding philosophy, no moral compass. She and her husband would steal a hot stove. They're not liberals. They're not progressives. The Sanders wing of the party figured this out. They, she stands for nothing but the aggrandizement of the Clintons and the greater enrichment of she and her husband and her greedy, crooked little daughter, Hiller, uh, Chelsea, who is, of course, the daughter of Webster Hubble. And she is essentially the king rat of the swamp. But what's confusing to me about this whole thing, and this has always been confusing to me when we see the left react to radical Islamic terrorism, why is it Hillary said Hillary Clinton slams Trump for denouncing Islamic terrorism? The story's on Infowars.com right now by Steve Watson. Wait a second. What happened on 9-11? Roger, I, 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 it just, it's infuriating me. I'll go with the official story. I'm not even going to sit here and debate the official story. Let's just say on September 11th, an, ev an event that was coordinated by Osama bin Laden, radical Islamic terrorist, killed 3,000 people in the United States. So... If that's the fact, why are you not allowed to slam? Why are you not allowed to denounce radical Islamic terrorism if they're killing people by the thousands in our country and trying to murder us and end our way of life? Why won't Hillary Clinton denounce that? Because it, it would hurt her within the base of the Democratic Party. Because it's politically incorrect uh, to be hardline on radical Islam. This was a major factor in President Donald Trump's election. He was willing to call it as it is. Uh, and the Democrats still demand, still insist on pushing footing their way around this question. Uh, if it plays out that way in another presidential campaign, you're going to have the exact same results. You know, Roger, I, politics is obviously a dirty game. We know that. But the Clintons are just straight up dirty, nasty, criminal thieves. I, I, I just can't believe that this woman is still even allowed to not just go on TV, but walk freely. This woman should be in jail. This woman belongs in an orange jumpsuit behind bars. Put this woman away before she robs something else.